I want to go over this uh, Instagram post because okay. um, it does talk about the, about financial products. And I, I want us to provide a commentary Let's do it. Uh, to this because uh, I think this guy has got a point, but at the same time, too, I think he's wrong. Okay. So um, can we can we go to my screen? Okay, cool. So this guy, I'm actually following. He's a CPA, brilliant guy. He's, he's been, he's got millionaire status by the time he was 30. Yep. God bless him. He, he, uh, he, he didn't come from anything and mm. he worked himself up, went through school. And, nice. But he, he says here, financial products you can't trust. IULs are stands for Index Universal Life. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 matter of fact, let's unpack this one one by one. So okay. IUL, okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, he says, oh, uh, uh, I know bold claim, but one out of one hundred situations where I see people have these products, maybe one is done the right way. Maybe I want you to make you smart and financial. So let's break down how to determine if they're worth it. Okay. okay? So number one, every investment need makes uh, needs a comparison to see if it's worth it. In this case, we'll use the S and P 500, oh, Standard and Poor's yes. 500 top companies. Historically, it's turned 10 percent. Uh, for this example, we'll say 8 percent. Now, here's the thing. I'll start with this. Okay. Tell me what time frame, the day you start and the day you end, that it will actually average 10. Well, see, that's the that's the thing, and and and, and this is the other thing too, because you, you're giving me the averages, yeah. right? How much money if if you if you put a hundred thousand dollars in mm-hmm. to the to the speculation market, yep. properly Jordan. Uh, understood, mm-hmm. and you lose 50. What do you have to return in order to get back to zero? hundred. Thank you. Yeah. So how much money have you lost compared yeah. to these and, particular and products? In time. In time. Yeah. In time. Yeah. So yeah, so that, that's, that's the one thing that I'll say. Two, when he talks about, um, he, he says something that I agree with. He says that they have to be properly structured the yeah. correct way. Yeah. And I think you and I can both agree to this. Some people get into this industry because they see a, the amount of money they can make mm-hmm. and they don't really take it seriously and they don't do the work that's needed to understand their products. So there are some people that are out there constructing these things the same way. It's the same way you have CPAs yeah. that might not be the best at what they're doing because right. they're looking at the dollar amount as opposed to looking out for their client. Yep. So across the board, there's going to be some situations. It's all about strategy. Yep. Right? And a lot of CPAs are trained to look at the rear of your mirror. But what happened, yep. our job is to forecast what can, can happen. Can happen, exactly. So, so yeah, listen, again, this, I, like, I, I like to have this as a debate. It's not an, it's not an argument. I'm not at your throat. Yeah. But I think if you're going to put a post like this, yep. you got to really unpack it. But he can't because yeah. Yeah. it's Twitter, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Instagram, Instagram, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. He, he would have to do a video to really unpack that. Sure. Yeah, right. And by the way, great post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's controversial yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. but... I love um, it. We're talking about it. <laughs> because, because last year, if you wanted to average 10%, yep. and you happen to retire in 2022, you would have lost 19.7%. 19.7% and lost. And I, and I know that for a fact because some of my friends are financial advisors. And I've seen I've seen their portfolios. Now their portfolios against the market was pretty good, yeah. right? And that, that's that's kudos to them for what they did. Yeah. But you still lost nineteen point seven percent. And how you can make that back up? So you need approximately a thirty five percent return just to get you back to square one. Yep. And then two years just went by also. So so now let's talk about let's talk about with okay. So we're specifically talking about IUL index yeah. universal. Life, yeah. Let's right? let's go back to the screen okay. here. All right. So cool. let's go back to the screener. You're, you're, you're familiar with this. Yeah. Uh, these are usually sold as pipe dream of investment and insurance. By the way, I agree with him. Yeah. It's, it's not supposed to be sold as investment insurance. Correct. You know, uh, for the primary uh, premise of any life insurance policy is death benefit and also capital preservation. Mm-hmm. It's not supposed to be beating the S&P 500. Correct. I, I agree with him on that. Yeah, absolutely. But when you run the numbers, though, term life plus investing the difference almost always wins. I also have to disagree there. I disagree with that emphatically. Yeah. Emphatically. Yeah. There is a place for term. Every, mm-hmm. Okay, first, before I, I say I this, everything's about strategy. Mm-hmm. There is a place for term. However, you know this, I know this, I, and I think it's even gone up now. It was 97. I think 98% of term policies don't pay out. Because? Actuaries. Yes, yeah, right. Can we get into the actuaries? <laughs> These are guys that are, that are put in place that, that research economic history from all the way to the 1800s up to now that are supposed to protect the insurance company. So if you're getting, if you're 20 years old, I have no problem getting you a 30-year policy. They're, they're daring you to get a policy, right? Yes. <laughs> Please get a policy. Yes. If you have to understand, it's like about, it's like renting a house, right? And so like you're betting against the insurance that you're going to pass away between these 30-year spectrum. Yeah, and they're betting 50, that, yeah. yeah, and they're, yeah. they're betting that you're not, yeah. right? And so like I agree with, I agree with some of the things he's saying, but when it comes to that, no. I think that when you use term in a blended space yeah. and you you pair it with other things yeah. to be able maybe to bring the premium downs on whole lives or things like that, I think that that's a great strategy. But I wouldn't just say 
term is the end all be all. Yeah. Buy term, invest the rest. I, I, I don't know. Because the premise that. also is my investments yes. is going to also outweigh what my death benefit is going to be. And now I'm quote unquote self insured. Yeah. Right? But what do we recognize it as 20, 30 years? Tell me the perfect time when this cash value or the 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 the, the difference yes. is supposed to equal what your life insurance so it can fall off. And so therefore you don't need life insurance anymore. So 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 the biggest thing too is about when we're talking about con- the consistency of return and not losing money, right? Yeah. So like uh uh yeah, Doug Andrews, right? The zero sure. is your hero. For sure. Right. And I know yeah. like Transamerica, they have products too that um they, they cap at around twenty five percent and have a floor of like two or three percent. So there's even though you're not outperforming, at the end of the day, there's never a loss. Yeah, you're always advancing forward. Always advancing. It's like forward. you. It's like you as an offensive player. Every time Roethlisberger hands it off to uh, uh, a uh, running back yeah, from yeah. from Illinois, Hall. Yeah, Hall, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a four or five year game. Correct. Three of those plays in a row get first you down. a first down. Same thing. Same thing with absolutely. life insurance. Right? Absolutely. I, absolutely. I agree with that a thousand percent. Yeah. We may not have the uh, you know. The deep pass play. Yeah. Right? We might, we, we might get a five-yard hitch. Yeah. Right? But, but you want to know what? All of those plays are still in the game plan. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. That's it's right. about strategy. Yeah. Like, no, nowhere are we saying this is the end. I, I tell people all the time, and I tell my team, listen, we're an end-end category. Yeah. We want you to do us and yeah. go do something else. Yeah. Right? So that's how I look at it. Yeah, and plus, you know, when, when I'm able to know that my money is supposed to be there, no matter what, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, I could be a little bit more aggressive and adventurous in other things. Yes, you can. So, you know, yeah. it, uh, it's, it's a part of the strategy. I was part of the strategy. So, Correct. Uh, let's continue on here as well. IULs are an insurance salesman dream and an underperforming asset. The best, I can't agree with this because for 24 years I've been in, in the insurance business. Mm-hmm. I've been through two recessions. Mm-hmm. Actually, three now because the 01.com bubble, I've been through the 07, 09 Great Recession. Yeah. I've been through the pandemic, the flash recession. I've been through it all. None of my clients, including my own mother, has lost any money inside IULs and annuities. And so that's why she's retired today. Let me go to the next one. Annuities. Speaking of annuities. I have an annuity. Yeah, sure. I have NFL. Annuities. Yeah. I love it. Pens- if you have a pension, you yeah. have an annuity. Yeah. So uh, that's because sales people get paid, managers get paid, then your money is invested. Um, listen, you know, again, back to the insurance. The mis- misnomer is insurance agents selling annuities gets paid from your cash value of your policy. Mm-hmm. Incorrect. Because if a hundred, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars. Let's say today you can take a hundred thousand. For example, one of my clients in New York, under uh, um, my office over there, they just sold the laundromat. Okay. Put five hundred thousand dollars into an annuity. Okay. From day one, guess how much is in an annuity? Five hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Now the the the, the commission was, was uh, around twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, but they didn't come from the client's money. No. Where did it come from? Come from the marketing budget of the insurance company. Thank you. So, but if I had that inside a Manage portfolio. You're paying. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why we have to have these conversations. Yeah. Everything is fee based. Yeah. This is how they make their money. Yeah. Right? So like if I so 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 if we're gonna tell it if we're gonna tell it, let's tell it all, right? We have the insurance companies that pay us for a product that we sell to our to our customers or to our clients, right? right. That's how we get paid. We talk about annuities here, but most insurance agents are getting paid off of premiums. And some, there are some products where you get like a small percentage off of cash value dump-ins. There are some, there are some of those. But it's, it's, there's, there's no fee to manage the money. Right. It, and on top of that, can we talk about how like we have a set it and forget it model? For sure. Right? The, uh, so, guaranteed, income, guaranteed income writers. So, yep. so if that's the case, and, and, and if that's the case, then we really have to look at all of this in, in, in comparison as a whole and say, okay, look, at the end of the day, this is a great strategy. Investments are a great strategy. You have to invest. Yeah. But I think that we have to do a better job with giving the people the understanding of what goes on in that. Yeah. You know, our, our CPA is telling them, hey, listen, we're going to have these, this fee is for this, this yeah. fee is for this, this fee. Because I let, I'm very transparent yeah. when we deal with our clients. Like, hey, yeah. we get paid off of premium. We get paid off of cash sure. value. This is what your money does. There's a percentage of that within the first few years that mm-hmm. is, is a cost of insurance. It goes to X, Y, and Z. Like, be open sure. with, with all of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Disclose it. Yeah. And by the way, there's different types of annuities, too, as well. There are. So what he's talking about here is salespeople get managed, gets paid, then your money's invested. Yeah, I think he's talking about variable annuities. And that's different because that operates through what? 
And the, speculation. Yep. And uh, and and uh, you need to be securities licensed. Correct. You need to be series six sixty three. Correct. So those financial advisors, which I discovered, aren't much financial advisors at all. No. They're glorified mutual fund salespeople, or in this case, uh, glorified uh, uh, variable annuity salespeople. But specifically, what you and I are talking about right now is fixed and index annuities, Correct. which is not part of this definition. Yes, it's different. Next one, whole life. You're, you're an expert in whole life. Yeah. Uh, they step by, he's pretty sarcastic in this. They call it whole life because you'll be spending your whole life recovering from it. <laughs> <laughs> life insurance are the it. most cutthroat on this planet. Uh, you think they're going to let you get a better return than the market? It's When you put money inside life insurance, you're not supposed to beat the market. Again, it's the capital preservation model. But you beat the market when you don't lose, though. Yeah, you you well. So it's it's an overtime thing, right? So if you look at within the last, if you look at if you if you compare a whole life product within the last 30, 40 years versus just uh, uh, any any sort of investment, okay, yeah, you're you're not going to beat that investment on certain years when you have 50, 60, 70 percent returns, right? But eventually, it's the tortoise and the hare situation, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you're running fast, but so when we get to the when we get to the uh, finish yeah. line, mm-hmm. it's a wrap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So like, I look at it and say, I, I look at it and say this. Like, we have to understand what type of products we're talking about, right? I'll give you an example. So we, we, one of the brokers that we work with is called Guardian. Guardian has a phenomenal product. It's called the Index, uh, the, uh, index Whole Life, right? Mm-hmm. But the Index, which, you know, these guys would, would chomp at the bit at. It's like, oh, it's Index, right? Yeah. But and you know, Whole Life. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's Index. Right? So, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the market. The Index is based off of the return that they, it's a mutual life insurance company, meaning that they, the investors is the premium holder. Yeah, not, not the stock market. Not, not the Wall stock Street. market. Not the Wall Street. So there's not another hand in the cookie jar. The Index is based off of the return that the insurance company makes that year, so they determine what they're going to give on top of their contractual, like about five and a quarter or anything yeah. like that. That's where the index is at, mm-hmm. right? So why is that important? Well, the last three years, or four years, excuse me, they've capped out at around 11.5%. What was the market doing the last three or four years, For sure. right? So um, though, that's, that's the savings grace right there. Yeah. It's like, okay, I took a hit here, but I'm okay here, yeah. right? That's the balance. That's all we are. We're a balancing act. You know what I mean? And this is also presuming that America's done a good job of saving for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. You're about, to, you're about to go. You're about to get into something. Bro, you know, this is assuming that mom and dad <laughs> did the job of paying off the mortgage, yep. putting money inside the 401k, yep. having a pension, no debt when they retire. Yeah. What's the reality? Everybody's broke, bro. Yeah. People are broke today. Yeah. And so... Well, the, the country is 31, 31, $32 trillion in debt, too. That's right. So we're not just talking about the people. We're talking about our whole country. Yeah, that's right. We're in debt. And so I think the last stat was 53 million people are underinsured. It's yeah. A lot, of, it's a lot of people are underinsured. Correct. And what's evidence of that? GoFundMes. Yep. What's evidence of that? People are asking around. The fastest way to divide families, divide siblings, is when they have to pay for mom and dad's funeral. Yeah. Because they're going to look at each other like, you didn't pay your share, you didn't pay your share. And next thing you know, they don't talk for the rest of their life because they're financially mad at each other. Correct. They know how to heal from that. Well, whole life is a great final expense chassis mm-hmm. to get a policy when mom and dad are still alive. Yeah. And you buy a very small final expense whole life policy to yep. make sure that when that time does come, that the siblings have the money to pay for the funeral. So therefore, we can honor and celebrate mom and dad's life. I have, I have a, uh, a client... Um, who prior to me had already experienced that, wow. right? They had lost somebody. Yeah. And so what had happened was, and, and unbeknownst to them, um, their, their mom got a whole life policy on the wife, right? And then the wife passed away, yeah. right, unexpectedly. Yeah. And so the father was working 40, 30, 30 40, $50,000 a year somewhere in that. Saying, How am I going to pay for this, right? And yeah. that's when the mom stepped up and said, hey, listen, this is what we, something that we did. Yeah. Unbeknownst to you, we, she did this, yeah. right? And so they were able to take care of that. Yeah. And, you know, and he was able to have a little money come to him and help with the kids and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Because I, I just lost my wife. I got three kids. We got to figure this out, yeah. right? So that was a saving grace. So it, it goes beyond just you, you're talking about the market and all of that stuff. Like we're talking about life too. Yeah. Like, the one thing that we can't get past here is what? Death and taxes. Sure. So to be able For to sure have thing. this set up mm-hmm. is a great it's a great tool. Again, it's, I'm going to go back to this word. It's a, it's a great strategy yep. to be able to handle that portion of life on top of being able to warehouse your market, you warehouse your money in a safe space. Because where are you going to put it? You going to put it in the banks? <laughs> and they're potentially going to fail? Yeah. And by the way, where are the banks put their money? And insurance. insurance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and we, and we know this because we, we're in that business, space. Yeah. But, but it's just like... FDIC, Federal Depository Insurance Corporation. Well, Boley. Bank on Life Insurance. Coley. 
corporate, corporate own life, life insurance. insurance. <laughs> so, it's like, so we can keep going, right? Like, We're in the same place, baby. Yeah. So you know, the, the thing, the thing too is what. Let's, let's take on whole life real quick. Yeah. There's premiums you can pay called ten pay whole life yep. or twenty pay whole life. Yep. That you pay for ten premiums. Yep. Or twenty premiums. Mm-hmm. Guarantee and and from, from them going forward, let's say you pay ten for eleven year all the way till you pa- you, you pass on. Yep. Or twenty years until you pass on, you never have to pay another premium for the rest of your life, and it's guaranteed to pay when you pass away. Pass away. That's the contract. You also have premiums. So we you, you also have premiums. We talked about that. I said that there's a place for term. You also have premiums where what, what we do is we blend term with whole life to bring the premium down. And so what happens is after right. a 10, 15, 20 year time frame, okay, yeah, the term drops off, but that was- you paid off the house or you no know, more need for college education. Exactly, yeah. but then on top of that, this policy has what's called an increasing death benefit. Uh, so right when the term drops off, guess what the death benefit's been doing? Growing. Yeah. Guess what the premium's been doing? Going down. So you look at it and it's like, okay, I was paying $6,000 a year. Yeah. Now, because it's so much cash in here and the policy is earning me so much, yeah. now I'm only paying $3,000 a year. And that's right. a killer for the people that say, well, when you die, the insurance company keeps all your cash and only pays out your death benefit. You just, you just sabotage that, that misconception. Yeah, well, yeah, because the reality is, is that they don't know yeah. insurance. They know certain insurance companies and how certain insurance companies work, but like, there's so many different products. Like, everything's always evolving. Yeah. Maybe that was how it was back in the day, but yeah. like, things have evolved. Like, yeah. You have these great products out here, and if you have the right people that are writing it the correct way, they operate the same. It's no different when right. if you have the right financial advisor. Right. I guarantee you, being an NFL athlete, yeah. I've met some financial advisors that weren't the greatest, bro. Yeah, for but sure. does that mean that all financial advisors don't yeah. want to do well for their for their their, their client? No. Yeah. Right. You know, also, I, also the, the flip side too as well. Sometimes people get an insurance policy from their insurance agent because they have a car policy with them. Yep. They have a homeowner's insurance policy yep. with them. Bundle. But that same car insurance agent, the same homeowner's insurance, the same renter's insurance, the same umbrella insurance agent yep. doesn't necessarily know how to uh, choose the right insurance company or structure it the right way. Correct. And, 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 and package it the right way to make it more cash value retirement planning appropriate. Well, and, and the reality of it is, too, is that, and I, and I, and I tell people this, like, so, so again, like we said, we try to we try to make it to where we can get the premium as low as possible to be able to uh, to front load the cash value. That, that's that's our infinite banking structure model. Mm-hmm. So we actually lose money on the front end because again, as insurance agents, we make our money through what the premium, right? However, we play the long game. Sure. So like I know that if if I have a um, for instance, we have a small business that we captured and we mm-hmm. create these policies to. Um, be an alternative benefit solution to the 401k, yeah. right? They can't afford the 401k. Tax qualified plans are too too high for them to afford for where they are now in business. So then we structure our policies to be a savings mechanism mechanism yeah. with, con- with continuous contractual growth, right? So why is that important? It's important because now we've just created this insurance in- instrument yeah. <laughs> and gave it a yeah. benefit to a company so that they can decrease the employee turnover yeah. because uh, you have a percentage of people that are, I forgot where the, the, the study was done, but there was a study done that said around uh, 63% of Americans that work in, in uh, businesses would take lower pay if their company offered some sort of benefit. And you want to know the number one benefit? Retirement. Retirement, and then right behind that, life insurance. Look at that. I love it. So I love it. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Uh, I think the last one here, mutual funds, you know, uh, they, they have act, the mutual funds are actively managed. They have big offices, big salaries. They really have a real advantage is common sense. Many of them will not outperform the market on a large scale. <laughs> you know, by the way, I, I, uh, I've, I've, I've been Series 6 licensed. I've been Series 663 licensed. Mm. Um, a lot of them will have their spikes. Tell me what the market is going to do that year. I'll mm. tell you which mutual fund to pick. Yeah. But then you don't know. Yeah, Be- so. because again, it's called the speculation market. You're looking yeah. at data, because you talked about it, you did a great analogy. You talked about the market is based off the rear view. People look at the past performances to try to predict what's going to take place. Yeah. But we can't predict trains exploding in different cities. We can't predict yeah. uh, wars breaking out. We yeah. can't predict Pandemic. pandemics yeah. happening. Yeah. We can't pre- yeah. yeah, we can't predict uh, 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 these large scale companies failing, right? Yeah. Nobody could could we have predicted Lehman Brothers going out of business? Of course not. Okay, yeah, but it, it had a major Bear effect. Yeah, yeah Bear Stearns. Yeah. It had a major effect yeah. on the market. Can we predict that these banks were going to be failing earlier this year? Yes, yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. Because because history shows that banks have a, banks run a same play: elevate lots of loans and cure lots of debt. Oh my God, we can't pay it. Go to the Federal Reserve and the government. The government says, "Hey, we're going to help you out." Oh, and by the way. 
Uh, this is an, an, an inflation market. It's, it's, it's a world global a pandemic when it comes to the financials of the market. Yeah. Hmm, taxpayers, we need to and, bail and us the thing out. Is that insurance companies, too, are probably some of the most highly audited and regulated institutions in America. Well, this is the old money club, man. Well, yeah, well, let's look at it, man. Like, look, what, what have they been through? Like, yeah. you have these companies that's been around since the 1800s, yeah. right? Like eight, like 1865 and 1870 when they were established, and they've been paying dividends since those yeah. whole times. Con- like continuous the civil terms. war, civil war. Uh, you had you had the Knickerbocker crisis in 1907, right? right? You you uh, even in the establishment of the Federal Reserve in 1913, then you come back with the Depression. Like right. you look at all of these different things, and I think you might have even talked right. about it. Right. Ray Kroc, how did he get started? Of course. Right? Life insurance. All right. No back with land for a theme park. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, remember, you, you remember James Cash? Is it James Cash? J.C. Uh, Penny? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. used that same, to kids. To, to like, so it's like, okay, so yeah. it's good enough for the wealthy families and for all of these established corporations, yeah. but it's, it's, it's poo-pooed on yeah. when you talk about these type of things. It's and just, so our audience that's listening is live or watching the replay. Yeah. You hear stuff from us. By the way, I'll say both sides. Mm-hmm. You hear stuff from us. And you hear the opposite from other social media posts. My suggestion is you got to educate yeah, yourself. Yeah, do your homework. You know, because um, uh, some things that we talk about because we have a certain expertise, some other somebody else may have a different expertise. We all have different experiences. You got to figure out what fits for you. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.